Okay, I got a little bit carried away there. Uh, let me show you what this program was actually meant to demonstrate. Uh, first, I'll show you how to turn off that intro. Uh, all the Star Wars code is here. So what you need to do is right click and disable that. And then you have to enable this other code that just orients the camera properly. So once that's enabled, you can start up the program and it'll go straight to um, what we want. What this does is the same thing I showed you in the uh, sketch demo and this calculates whether you have enough gas to make a trip. If I start off with five gallons in the tank, press enter, and I need two gallons for my trip, press enter, then I'm okay and the green light goes on to show that I have enough gas. Let's stop this and look at the code, which is all here in this calculate method. OK, I'm going to leave it to you to download this program and look at it and maybe tweak it and learn some of the details. But the, um, the main thing is the, uh, the red lamp and the green lamp have this turn on and turn off function. And we can look at the details of that later, but that's all you really need to know uh, for what I'm trying to show you here. So when the program is run, we first make sure that the red lamp and green lamp are turned off. That's fine. Now we have three variables that we've created here. When you create a variable, if you'll remember our discussion of variable types, you can choose a number, a boolean, an object, which is just any object in the Alice world, or some other things, including strings and various other special properties. So hopefully that's not too big a shock since we discussed various variable types. And I've created three variables for this program. A numeric variable to represent gallons in the tank, another one to represent gallons needed over here, and a boolean, that is a true-false value, to represent whether we have enough gas or not. So one new thing here that you haven't seen before is that the world object has in its functions methods to prompt users for a value. And there are various things that you can drag here and fill in. If I want to prompt for a variable, I just drag the variable into the program and it starts out for by asking me for a value and just give it any old value doesn't matter because the next thing we're going to do is go to these world functions and drag in ask user for a number and we just drop that into the value slot and then you can um, uh, enter whatever question you want to ask. Okay, that's just a demonstration, so we'll get rid of it because what we want to do is already here. So first we ask the user for the number of gallons, and that goes in this variable. Then we ask the user how many are needed, and that goes in this variable. The next, we take our enough gas Boolean value. We would drag it down here. Let me show you how this was done. And again, we'll start by just giving it an arbitrary value because we're going to change this. So this by itself sets it to true. But what we're going to do is a comparison. And that also comes from these world functions here. And okay, let's fit a greater than test from our world functions here. And when the little frame lights up there in a green outline. That means we've done it properly. First it prompts you for a value for A and there are some uh, constants here but we want an expression. So the first value is gallons in tank and then it prompts you for the value of B. This is a little awkward but uh, just play around and you'll get used to it. And um, we don't want to constant, we want an expression, and we want B to be gallons in tank. And that's exactly what we have here. Oh, I goofed. And if you make a mistake, 
you can just fix it after you're finished. Just click on this little down arrow here and choose something else. And that's what we wanted. Of course, now we got two of them here, but that was just a demonstration, so I'll discard this one. And finally, in this if statement, we could have put this comparison in here, but just so that I could demonstrate Boolean variables, I set the truth value of this expression, that is whether or not we have enough gas, to here. And so if this is true, we turn the green lamp on, and if it's false, we turn the red lamp on. And that's all there is to it. If you uh, don't understand this, just play around with it and uh, uh, you can ask me in class or uh, send me an email, help, I, I'm confused, and I'll get in touch with you. And uh, in addition, when the mouse is clicked on the ground, it will run the calculate function again. So let's see how that actually works. So if I have five gallons in my tank and I only need two, then the green lamp goes on, and it's helpfully uh, labeled by these um, great big letters. Now I press the OK, and now I click on the ground to start over. The lamp goes out, asks me another question. If I have two gallons and I need five, the red lamp goes on. I need to get gas. And I also fixed it so that you can turn these lamps on and off by clicking them just for grins. And uh, that's about it. I'll uh, show you some of the other... Tr oh, yes, there's one other trick I wanted to show you. In fact, uh, let's start a new world. No, we don't want to... Okay, let's choose a sand world. The um, Star Wars effects in the beginning were made using billboards and a lot of trial and error. To make a billboard, you just have to have a graphics file. And in the file menu here, you click on Make Billboard. And then you find the graphics file you want to import. Let's see, uh, here's the one I used for the, um, the crawl import that and it made me a, made me a billboard let's see if I can uh, make that bigger so you can see it and it's it's just an object if I spin it you can see that the text is backward on the back and what I did was uh, put it up in the sky and then tip it over and make it move past and I made the sky black and um, th this this is only the only real trick. I just spent a lot of time fussing around until I got it to look lo right. And uh, one other trick I used is if you look over here in properties, any object can be hidden by setting is showing to false. And that makes it disappear. So I used that and I also used this opacity thing and in order to make it fade. So you can, if you set it to 50%, an object will start to become transparent and so forth. So if you're interested, I'll cover this in more detail later. So I've provided this program for you to download uh, where I posted the exercise on Blackboard. So please do that and play around with it. And if you mess it up, just download it again and hack at it some more. So uh, have fun.